Our next speaker here, Michael Diana, uh, a member of the OCU family and a mom, and uh, she and her husband are the five speakers on the day. Jen Teachner. Jen is an author, novelist, educator, military spouse, and school administrator. Jen has been awarded the National Outstanding American Teacher Award, recognized by the Autism Society of Middle Tennessee for her impact on the lives of students with Asperger's Syndrome and Autism Spectrum Disorder. Debuted as an Amazon bestseller in both paperback and Kindle with her novel, Beautiful Life, and was recognized with the Heart of the Family Award by the 21st Space Wing at Peterson Air Force Base, now Peterson Space Force Base, for the work she's done for the Armed Forces community as a military spouse. Jen earned her Bachelor of Arts in Elementary Education from Oakland City University and her Master of Education, Educational Leadership, from Lipscomb University. Over the last 20 years, Jen has served students and their families in many capacities, first as a teacher, then as a military spouse and school administrator. Presenting the importance of trauma-informed practices in education. How about a warm welcome for Jen Teachner. Domestic violence. Abandonment. Neglect. Mental illness. Divorce. Sexual abuse. Physical abuse. Emotional abuse. Imprisonment of a family member. And substance abuse. These are the adverse childhood experiences of trauma. I want to tell you a story about a little girl. And we're going to need to give this little girl a name. So can you help me out? Can you give me a little girl's name? Emily. 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 We'll go with Emily. And let's pretend that you are Emily's teacher. So Emily shows up to elementary school every morning. And she comes right in and she gets started. And immediately you notice her family doesn't have a great deal of means. You can tell by the way that she's presenting. But she comes in. She starts the morning routine. She does everything that you've asked of her. And she is busy. But then you notice every morning she's the last to turn in the morning work. She looks unorganized and a little unprepared. And when it's time for math, she never has a pencil. And then you think about math. Math is the one thing that she is not good at. No matter how many times you teach her the strategies, you show her how to do the problems, she just doesn't understand. She's not a bad kid. Matter of fact, she's a very compliant kid. Anytime something needs corrected, she does so immediately, without any pushback, without any attitude. And you even notice that when you're teaching, she is locking eyes, making eye contact, and fully involved in what you're saying and what you're doing. And you notice that she really likes you. She wants your attention, not in a bad way. She just wants to be close to you. But there's just something about Emily that you can't put your finger on. Something is not quite right, and she's just not making the progress that you're hoping she would make. As the years go by, Emily is growing, and she's involved in everything. Every sport that she can play, the high school band, play performances, anything that she can sign up for, she's there. And you notice that she always rides with her friends to the events. Her parents never come to watch her play or to perform. You think that's a little odd. And you start to think about her academics and how she's average at best. And how even though she is a sophomore, she doesn't even know her multiplication facts. She doesn't have 
the basic foundations of the math skills she needs to complete algebra and geometry. And you offer tutoring to all of your students before school and after school. And sometimes she comes. But Emily just needs more than the tutoring you provide. And then you think to yourself, but you know what? She needs to make that a priority. Maybe if she would stop playing so many sports and, and stop doing so many after school activities and really put what's important first, maybe she would do better. When it's time for graduation, Emily has a bad left knee from sports injuries. She has a solid 2.7 GPA. She hasn't even taken the ACT. And you're worried that she's not going to be prepared for her next step. But Emily's been given the opportunity to attend the college and to be the first on either side of her family to do so. But you're worried for her. Fast forward 20 years. A husband, two kids, and a golden doodle later, Emily is a math teacher, of all things. And she implements trauma-informed practices in her classroom every day. And most recently, she has moved on to her next step professionally as being a K-12 administrator. Emily is not a fictional character in the story I just told you. Emily is me. And out of the 10 ACEs or adverse childhood experiences I listed at the beginning, I have been exposed to nine. What I want you to understand is my teachers didn't know what to look for. The kid that showed up to school wasn't ready to learn. The kid that showed up to school was the leftovers, looking for love, food, to be valued, to be cared for, but there was not much room for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. You see, when kids are in trauma, their access to learning is diminished. When their brain is in survival mode, they feel out of control. They feel out of place, disconnected, self-conscious, unconfident, and unable to learn. And let me be completely transparent with you. They don't know they're in trauma. It's just life as they know it. And they're just as confused sitting in those seats in the classroom as their teachers are. They aren't sure why they don't get it. But they just don't. In America, 34.8 million children have been exposed to adverse childhood experiences. That is one out of every two. Let that sink in. In a classroom of 25 students, 12 of them have been exposed to or are living in trauma right now. According to a CDC study over adverse childhood experiences, exposure to six or more ACEs can diminish the life expectancy of an individual by 20 years. 20 years off of a life. When we are working with children, we have to realize that they are always going to come as they are. They don't know anything different. 
than that. For years in education, we have tried to target instructional strategies to help children. We have worked on early literacy, character education, the engineering and design process incorporated in STEM, high quality instructional materials and teacher strategy, differentiated instruction, and all of those things are fantastic, amazing work that I believe in wholeheartedly. But we still have students that need something more than that. We still have students who are living in trauma and their brain's access to all of those things are not ready for what they're going to learn. There's so much about trauma that we don't understand because our generations did not teach us to put mental and emotional health at the forefront. But that's what we have to do for students. We can't ignore that part. And as adults, we have to come vulnerable and brave enough to start the conversation. Trauma-informed practices in our schools allow students and adults to regulate their emotions, to find psychological and emotional safety, to create healthy school climates, and to access education and to be successful. But it's difficult. It is not easy to think about children in trauma. But when half of our classrooms are filled with children with trauma, we have to believe that probably the half of the adults in our schools also have been exposed to it as well. We must be brave and open up the conversation for mental health. We have to recognize that not everyone checks their lives when they walk in the door and that we're all ready to learn or to teach. Every kid that walks into our buildings deserves to be seen. They deserve to be seen in a way that transcends their ability to be ready. I know if my teachers could have seen me in that way, if they had been trained, or if they had been aware, it would have made all the difference in my young life. And every single kid deserves a difference maker. Thank you very much.